Hi there, this is Kevin from Data School. Uh, you're about to watch a Pandas tutorial that I presented at a Python conference in 2018. The goal of the tutorial is to help you become more fluent at using Pandas to answer data science questions. I split the tutorial into 10 parts. This first video introduces the tutorial and the data set and the other nine videos contain exercises that we work through. Now, I recommend that you watch the videos in order, and if you want to do the exercises at home, you can get the data set from GitHub, and there's a link to that in the description below. Uh, this is an intermediate tutorial, so if you're brand new to Pandas, I recommend that you start with my other video series, Data Analysis with Pandas, and there's also a link to that below. I hope you enjoy the series, so let's get started. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it's a real pleasure. My name is Kevin Markham, and this is Using Pandas for Better and Worse Data Science. Um, it's my privilege to be here today. So before I start talking about the tutorial and what's going to happen, I'm just going to tell you real quick about setup so that if anyone who's not done setup yet can go ahead and do that. Um, and so what you need to do, if you haven't already, is go to the GitHub repository. I've got these bit.ly links, bit.ly using pandas. And even if you've already set up your system, go ahead and go to that GitHub repository. Um, and once you're there, you can get the data files if you haven't already. There's some instructions on the page for how to download them if you're not familiar with downloading from GitHub. Uh, and then you'll want to open your Python environment. You can use any Python environment. I recommend using the environment that you're most comfortable with. I'm going to be up here using the Jupyter Notebook, um, but you do not need to do that at all. Just use whatever you're, you're comfortable with. Um, when you've got those files downloaded, put them in a place that's easy to access. Usually it'll be in the same directory as your script or your notebook, um, and that'll make it easiest to access the files. Um, I've got some instructions on the page for how to check that pandas and matplotlib are properly installed. Uh, those are what we're going to be using in the tutorial. And uh, if you're having internet problems, uh, or you are just like, wait, I forgot to bring a laptop with pandas. I have, um, I have five flash drives up here. All five of them have the data files on them if you need them and can't download them. And then three of them also have Linux, Mac, and Windows versions of the Anaconda distribution, which is pretty big, but you could definitely install it in a few minutes if you need it. So if anyone needs one of the, figures out they need one of those flash drives, just come up here and I'll, I'll give you one. Okay. Um, all right. So while people are getting settled and set up, I'll tell you a tiny bit about myself and then talk about the tutorial. Um, uh, as for me, uh, I used to live in, in Washington, D.C. and recently moved to Asheville, North Carolina in September with my wife and my son. Um, I'm the founder of Data School and I teach data science in Python online. Um, I'm mostly known for video tutorials on YouTube. Anyone ever seen one of my videos? Cool, cool, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, I used to do a lot of classroom instruction in data science uh, through General Assembly in DC, really enjoyed that. So it's nice to be back in front of a classroom because m right now I teach online only. Um, and I was, uh, I was at PyCon 2016 doing a tutorial called, call it, called using, what was it called? It was machine learning with text in Python um, two years ago, and that was really fun, and that's that. So let me talk a little bit about the tutorial format so you know what to expect. The goal here is to help you become more fluent at pandas uh, to solve data science problems, okay? So I am assuming you know some pandas. This is not an introductory tutorial. Uh, I don't assume you know much or anything about kind of the data science process. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of exercises. This is very exercise driven. Um, and we're between the two data sets, we're going to start with the police data set. And then at some point, we'll move on to the other data set, uh, depending upon timing. Um, how it'll work is I'll give you some sort of question or task. 
and you will try to uh, work to answer that question with pandas. Um, and then, you know, I'll give you a couple minutes or however long seems reasonable. Um, we'll talk about the answer together, and each exercise will conclude with some takeaways for here are the things I was trying to teach you through this particular exercise. Um, and some of the lessons will be very, like, pandas-specific lessons, and other will be more general data science lessons. Um, in terms of the pacing, we are, um, please keep in mind that everyone in the room is going to be at a different experience level, um, and some of you who are more beginner might find that this goes way too fast, and others who are more advanced uh, might find that it goes too slow, um, and I'm going to kind of aim for the middle. So I'll be kind of watching how people are doing during the exercises and answering questions. And at some point, I will just kind of stop and we'll move on. So uh, I'll do my best to kind of split the difference and head for an intermediate level. Um, if you do finish early, please help your neighbor. Um, please help each other. I'll be walking around, but there's only one of me. Um, so feel free to help each other, and if, you've, if you're at any point struggling, um, there are more seats throughout, so feel free to wander wherever. Um, uh, if you find that you're struggling and you're like, boy, this is really hard, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Um, there's going to be, most of the people in the room will not get everything, um, and it's okay if you're only picking up certain pieces. Totally fine. And the other cool thing is that most of the exercises are completely independent. So if you miss exercise 1, 3, and 4, and 6, and 7, you're going to be fine on 8, 9, and beyond. So don't worry if you miss something. You will be fine. There's a couple times where that, there's, that's not the case. And I will say you need to type this line of code so that you can, it will work for future exercises. So you are not going to get lost, or I hope you won't get lost. Uh, we will help. Um, all right. Final thoughts before we start. If you have not used the Jupyter Notebook before, which, as I said, is what I'm going to be using, it's probably not the best time to learn right now because it's a very different kind of environment than you're, you might be used to. Um, you can ask questions at any time, and if it's beyond the scope of what I want to talk about today, then I'll just tell you and we can talk about it afterwards if I even know the answer to your question. Um, the break, as she said, the break is at 3 o'clock. It'll be hopefully from 3 o'clock sharp to 3.20, and then we'll start right back up. We end at 4.40, so it's three hours of actual content. And after the tutorial, I will post all of the code on GitHub. Um, so if you want to follow along and type everything I type, you can. If not, there'll be reasonably well-commented code on GitHub afterwards that you can refer to. All right. Enough me talking on and on. Um, any questions for now before we jump in? Any questions? Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I have, I've got my uh, Jupyter Notebook open that I'm going to be using, and uh, we're going to start just doing some imports, and then we're going to talk about the first data set briefly and kind of do a little refresher on pandas before we actually do the first, quote, exercise. Okay? So, um, of course, we'll go ahead and import pandas as PD, and... Um, uh, if you don't use matplotlib much, no worries, but the, imp the standard import is import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, okay? How is the font size in the very back? Is it okay? Bigger? All right. All right. How's that? All right. And if you are in the notebook, but not, if you're not in the notebook, this is irrelevant, but if you're using the notebook, for certain versions of the notebook, you need to say percent matplotlib inline, okay? If you're not in the notebook, that's not relevant, uh, and it's no longer relevant for certain versions of the notebook, but um, it'll allow plots to appear. Okay, so um, first data set, data set one, is from the Stanford Open Policing Project, okay? And... Uh, I can tell you the URL, it's linked 
Um, this will only take a minute. We're just going to go to the web page of the data set. Um, and you can scroll down on the GitHub repository to this link to Stanford Open Policing Project. Let me make that bigger. And this is not critical if your internet is flaky. It's the Wi-Fi is, is open. It's 2018 PyCon. Um, this is the Stanford Open Policing Project's website. You don't need to read it just saying this is a data set of 31 states and police traffic stops in those states. Okay. Um, and if you did come to this page, I want you to click that View Data button, and then uh, it'll show you, if you're interested, you can see all the states and what data fields they have um, on the bottom. Uh, but really, I wanted to bring you to this. There's a link here that says Read Me, and uh, not critical, but it's a Read Me file that talks about some of the columns at times in the exercise, it might be helpful to have this page. So if you're trying to decode something in the data set, um, you can always come back to this page. Um, and you can ask me later if you, uh, if you got lost how to get here, and I can pull it up on your machine. But this is some data about the data set. Um, the data set we're using is from Rhode Island. Uh, and I just picked it because it's a nice small data set, but a lot of the fields are there. Um, I decrease the size from the one that's available online by randomly sampling it 20% uh, of the rows and removing some of the columns that didn't interest us. Um, so that's, those are the only modifications I've made. Everything else is as is. Okay. All right. So um, let's go ahead and read it in to Pandas. And then, again, we're just going to talk about it briefly, and then we'll jump into the first exercise. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to create a data frame named RI, short for Rhode Island, because it's nice and short to type. But you can use something else if you if you like. And this will actually just be a simple read CSV command of police.csv. Okay. Um, and you shouldn't get any errors on that. And you don't need to change any of the default uh, read CSV parameters. Um, all right, so starting now, I'm going to be asking lots of questions and uh, throughout the tutorial, so lots of participation. So this is the head of the, the data frame. Um, what does it look like each row represents? And either you can raise your hand or just call it out. An incident, a traffic stop, so, you know, it looks like, okay, a date, a time, an age, so this must be each row is one traffic stop, okay? Um, and then if you use ri.shape, the shape attribute, what do these two numbers represent? I'm sure someone said it. Number of rows, number of columns, so 91,741 rows, 15 columns, um, and then... Let's just take a look real quick at the D types. And I know we, we barely look at the, at the data set. You'll have plenty of time to do that during the exercises. I'll focus you on certain columns. But here are the data types. Um, so I just need a volunteer to explain what these different data types mean real quick. Who wants to do that? Okay, uh, object is a string, so probably some sort of category. Um, could It can actually be an arbitrary Python object, but it's usually a string. And then float and bool, so what are those? Right, so the float, floating point numbers, and bool, short for boolean, uh, which are true false values. Okay, so just useful to keep in mind what the different column types are. Um, that we're going to be working with. Um, and let's scroll back up for a second, back to the head. Um, and we, we've got this NAN here in the county name um, column. What does NAN mean? Not a number. Uh, and more generally, like, what does it indicate? Missing value, someone said, or lots of people said. So NAN indicates a missing value. It's a special value in pandas that indicates the value is missing. So why might a value be missing? Why might it be missing? It wasn't recorded at the time. It wasn't recorded at the time. That's one, uh, that's the usual answer. 
Um, great. And uh, can anyone tell me one other reason a value might be missing? One more time. Data corruption. Okay. Great. 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 Um, any other reasons? Yep. In the back. Redacted for privacy. A great answer. Um, the one other I would bring up is um, that it's not like a value can be missing if it's irrelevant for a particular row. So if you had a data set of Python users and there was a column called like attending PyCon 2018 that was true or false and you had another column called PyCon 2018 registration date, that would be a missing value for anyone who's not registered for PyCon. So it's not that we didn't want to collect it, it's that it's irrelevant, okay? So because the person is not attending PyCon, they don't have a registration date, so you would make that like a missing value. So the point there is values can be missing for different reasons. Sometimes you wanted to get it and you couldn't. Uh, sometimes you have it, you got rid of it, and then sometimes um, it's just not a relevant value, okay? Um, and why would we mark something as NAN rather than um, just like a zero or an empty string or the text unknown? What's the value of having NAN? Uh, how about there? Right, right. You want to distinguish, uh, he said so you don't want to screw up like your statistics on a column. So. Basically, you want to be able to distinguish what is real data from what is like marking. Like if you typed the word unknown in a string column and that was like a last name field, what if someone's last name was unknown? Or how do you distinguish the missing data from the real data? So that's why you mark data as missing. Okay. All right. I swear we're almost at the first exercise. Um, I'm going to just type one more line of code and I want you to tell me uh, what we're doing ri.isnull.sum, okay? All right, ri.isnull.sum. Uh, I have two questions. What do these numbers mean? And then second is going to be, how does this line of code work? So what are these numbers? The sums of all null values in each column, or more generally just like, what does this represent at a high level? The count of missing data in each of these columns, okay? So stop date has zero missing values, stop time has zero missing values, et cetera. Um, now my other question is how does this line of code work? Who feels like they can explain like the two steps that go into this line of code? Right there. Okay. Right. So our first step is ri.isNull, which is a data frame method, and it returns a data frame of true values and false values. And then when you take the sum, okay, you're taking a sum of a data frame, and you might think, well, what's that going to do? Well, it does two things. One is it sums over the zero axis, the index axis, so it kind of collapses all the values down, like the, the math, I think of it as the mathematical operation goes down, or you can think of it as the dimension of the data that's being collapsed is the zero axis, so it does the sum in that direction such that you end up with column um, sums. And the other thing it's doing is, re is translating true into one and false into zero. Um, and if you didn't know that true actually is equal to one and false is equal to zero, which is why you can add together Boolean values, okay? All right, so um, let's, sorry, let me delete that to clear the screen here. Okay, so let's get into our first exercise and get you guys and girls uh, typing um, and writing some code.